Sports with Scott Cohen. Weather with Brian Lapis and the 22 News Storm Team. This is the WHMP Morning News with Bob Flaherty and Denise Fazella. It is town meeting and election season all across the Pioneer Valley in the town of Deerfield. There is a competitive race, a number of competitive races on the ballot, the marquee one of which is for a three-year seat on the Board of Selectmen. Or I should just say the select board, Carolyn Ness. I apologize. I know that you guys made that change of, of a while back. Carolyn Ness is the chair of the select board in Deerfield. She is being challenged for re-election this year for another three-year term. Carolyn, uh, thanks again for for making the time. Uh, how many terms would this make if you're re-elected? Well, this will be my sixth ter- term. But I love what I do, and I love making a difference, and. I love making connections uh, with my within my community, but also on the regional and state uh, level, so I can try to solve problems and move us forward. Because we're always co- constantly challenged by trying to figure out how to do things with with limited money. There's a lot of issues on the table in Deerfield. There's always the issue of taxes. There's always the issue of spending. Um, but lately, the hot topic in Deerfield seems to be whether or not to allow the sale and cultivation of marijuana, which is now legal uh, for recreational use in Massachusetts. You are one of two members of the board that voted recently not to put a marijuana prohibition question on the ballot, which has ruffled the feathers of some people in the community who feel like Deerfield shouldn't be in the pop business. Why do you think it's a good idea for Deerfield to allow legalized cultivation and sale of marijuana? Well, the town and the state voted to legalize recreational marijuana. It's here. It's legal in all the communities around us, and we need to collect the revenue to mitigate any problems that might pop up. But most importantly to me, we need to have a successful educational outreach program in our schools. And we also need to support our farmers. There's no reason our farmers can't cultivate marijuana um, if, they, if that's what they want to do. It sounds like there's been some scare tactics employed. Uh, people have been, been uh, you know, arguing that, well, would you want one of these things next to your place? And it, how do you respond to the concerns that are being thrown and whether or not they are, in fact, legitimate? Well, I think the biggest thing is we have a conservative plan to roll this out. Uh, we have an overlay district, and I think you just need to be thoughtful. There's no reason um, the facility can't look like a tobacco barn. It doesn't mean that you have to have high-power lights. You can have low-level lights. Um, I, I think there's many ways to deal with it in a, in a very um, non-intrusive way. You just have to be creative, and you have to work with the people, and, and, and that's... And that's what, it takes time. There's no question. You have to go back and forth. But just to take a position and not be willing to um, work it through, is, is, is not, it does not benefit Deerfield. One of the arguments you made <clears throat> during the debate over whether to schedule the vote was, this is coming and it's foolish for a town not to have the money to deal with the obvious impacts that are, or the expected impacts that are going to come with this legalization. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you... You're going to get 3% of any sales from an establishment in your town, but you also are going to have a host agreement, and the host agreement is supposed to cover your cost. And, and part of that cost uh, is our requirement of the licensing process is an educational outreach, community outreach program. So I just want to make sure we have a, a really robust successful program and that and that is going to require some negotiation but that doesn't mean it can't happen and that it won't be successful so I, again it's just you have to put time into it and you have to be thoughtful but i think it can be done okay and i i don't honestly think that it's going to be ultimately in the end any different than having a local package store Carol ness is the chair of deerfield select board she's a candidate for your election joining me on the newsmakers line Let's switch gears and talk about some other things. Uh, obviously, there's never enough money to go around, and people in Deerfield and, and many communities complaining about taxes being too high. Uh, is there any way to reduce the tax burden on residential property owners uh, who, of course, pay the lion's share of Deerfield's tax burden every year? Of course. You use whatever you have to leverage other grant opportunities. Um, for, for example, the senior center and the uh, um, senior housing. We have been collecting money under our Community Preservation Act, and so we'll use that money to leverage other grant opportunities to do these big projects. 
The other thing is we just took advantage of um, and participated in one of the first communities in the state to be designated a municipal vulnerability preparedness program uh, community, the MVP program that was just rolled out by the state to combat extreme weather and climate change. The first grant round is in a couple weeks and then again in July, and each round is up to $400,000. And, and what is really unique about this program is that it covers the upfront cost of um, engineering permitting, which again is very unusual. But this is a huge opportunity to lower our financial impacts on like replacing culverts and fixing up our roads and things like that um, from these weather events in Deerfield. We're at the bottom of the bowl. We're gonna, we are one of the most vulnerable communities um, because we're at the confluence of the Deerfield and the Connecticut. And it, we, we need to keep constantly doing these things. Um, we need to figure out how we're going to sustainably fund our schools at an adequate level. I, the foundation budget is being reviewed in this next year. It's critical that we be active and participate because it's, it's almost 70 percent of our budget is school related. Um, and then the other thing uh, that we're working on is we've got certification grant and then to become a district, but then we also have first year startup costs for um, the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. There is no district in the center of the state here. So we're, Deerfield has been the lead community in an effort to establish a valley-wide mosquito district. Money from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, have to go come to the state and go through the state reclamation board, the Department of Ag, and the mosquito districts, and it comes down to us. So like in the Zika outbreak, we had no ability to get money. So by having a district, we're in a position to get federal money, but then um, we can also start to work on our ditches and stuff through the district under the district um, guidance because there are some wetlands exempt exemptions. And again, by sharing the burden from you know, Vermont border, Berniston, all the way down to Long Meadow and West Springfield, we're, we're cutting the cost and being able to deliver services at a very minimal level. You recently released a a position statement or, or more of a, almost like a resume of all the things you're involved in on a regional level, and it, and it, it filled two full pages. Uh, I guess, you know, you're, you're involved in so many different things. What's your favorite part about doing this job? I mean, what's your favorite thing you're involved in? Well, I, I think what, what, what makes me be excited is that everything is, is so siloed. Groups of people work to get, you know, work in their silo, but they don't overlap. I am one of those people that overlap between the silos, and because I overlap between the silos, I can get people to work together, and then we can figure out how to, how to solve problems. I mean, one of my favorite committees is the Western Region Homeland Security Council because you're working with all your responders, you're dealing with all your um, uh, risks to your community, but you're, you're figuring out ways how to get the federal Homeland Security dollars down to the local level. And it can be as simple as getting uh, GPS units to every highway department so they can figure out take pictures of their culverts before the storms with the GPS units, and then you come back out after the storm damage has happened, and you, are, you have the picture which is stamped with your location and, and the time stamp, so you can show that you've maintained your culvert and that it's wrecked between before the event, the condition before the event, and after event, and it's very simple to file for um, you know federal assistance based on that picture and we got training for the highway departments so they can use this and it's it, the documentation the debris management plans those are the things that really impact us on the local level and I and I love having the ability to say we need to solve this problem and try to sort out where we get money and how we can affect it on the local level one final question, Carolyn Ness. You've been uh, here for six terms in this job. You want three more years, and you're running against a guy, Eric Brown, who there's a lot of Eric Brown signs out there, but I'm not sure a lot of people who don't know him personally know much about him. And it seems to me, at least and this is just my perspective, that this I don't know if this is as much about trying to elect Eric Brown as much as it's trying to get rid of you uh, in terms of this election. And Does that bother you at all, and are you surprised by that? Well, I mean, change... Is, is part of life, and I'm constantly trying to challenge us to move forward, and 
that that is always an issue. Um, you have to be able to deal with what's happening and what's coming down the pike, and that means you have to be somewhat flexible, and you can't keep doing things the same way that we always have. And I, you know, that's that's always what people are concerned about and I and I feel you know that we I try to do the best I can to anticipate what we're going to do and that ruffles feathers over the years Chris 